The idea behind setting up the meeting today was to get lots of different people together from uh, different sectors in Wandsworth, from the community sector, voluntary sector, statutory organisations, um, talk to them about the project, um, let them know what we have done so far, um, and find out more about you know, their experiences of hardship and crisis in Wandsworth. People who are experiencing hardship and crisis, or who have experienced it, having a stronger voice. And I think that's something that I want to really kind of, you know, think about today um, and as we go forward about listening to the people that we're trying to support um, and working out how we can do that better. Um, and, you know, this, this is the network. Um, you know, people here, people coming to events, people sharing their experience, their knowledge, and as working out together how to take that forward and how to make things better. Over the course of, of the four-year projects, we plan to provide advice and support to 1,200 people. That's going to be through Beverly and Joe, our project advisors, as well as through a network of community volunteers. One of the things that we've been doing over many, many years is that we've discovered in Wandsworth, and we all know that if we think about it, is actually there's a whole different sections of communities in Wandsworth just to give you an example, there's 250 faith groups just in Wandsworth alone. There's seven mosques. I mean, these are centres where a huge amount of people go, but we don't often think about them as voluntary sector organisations. So part of this project and our partnership with the CAB is how do you bring the expertise that the CAB has and the expertise that are held in the council are held in the Mental Health Trust, are held in voluntary sector organisations, and how do you merge them and enable community groups to be part of a wider network? I've spent a lot of time talking to people about, well, but what, what is crisis? You know, and I think in terms of hardship, we all think of financial hardship, um, and I think that's easier to sort of define, but a crisis for one person, you know, could be okay for somebody else. By the time people get to crisis, Actually, the conditions, their well-being, their health, all those different aspects um, have probably gone through some sort of um, different experience. And what we want to understand is, is there a better way of designing preventative services? And often that might be, well, a single discipline service is not going to be adequate for what are often very complex and complicated problems. And making sure that we have a culture that at least recognises the issue, the fact that we're here today and that the big lottery have invested in this, um, recognise it as an issue. It's not something to, to hide away from. An individual in crises would usually um, go to a kind of strategy agency, but before that, is there kind of a support network that could exist lower level within the community itself? And we had a conversation actually about training hairdressers to become first aid trainers. And actually, what's that one point of contact you might have with somebody? It can be really important and building up that trust um, at that level. So potentially pre even getting to crisis. Um, we need to reach people at the right time. We need to reach people before they actually get to, to a crisis point. There's a commitment and I have to take this back to my own organisation to deal with the causes, not just the symptoms. So again, this is why I think we're so supportive of the project, because actually it is trying to get to the heart of it. Having the community and the voluntary sector driving, in the driving seat for the arrangements, that probably is the way to go, as opposed to those organisations such as the Council saying, here's a one-size-fits-all template, shrink-wrapped approach, come and join it if you like. Actually, there's a much better opportunity here. I mean, the room's full in terms of engaging with each other and then coming back to the organisations and saying this is how we want to operate. I think there's something about behaviour change in different organisations. Everyone's starting to look more outwards towards other organisations um, and be always looking for how we can collaborate in order to support an individual person rather than thinking first about what we do and how we do it, but thinking about what's needed and how we can fit together with other people to make that work. The systems come around the person rather than the person having to manoeuvre themselves around and navigate around those systems. And I think having this network, we can actually have really conversations between voluntary organisations, strategy organisations, but also, as you mentioned, things like bingo, sort of sport club, having that wider conversation with just one particular sector on their own. How rare, I think, it is that we actually have people from very diverse parts of the community of society bring in very different sets of perspectives and intelligence to a problem. I loved the idea that we had stories 
so that actually you could hear the interconnections and you realize that actually, while this might be an issue that seems to be about, say, DWP um, uh, and, and joblessness or, or, and, and the problems or about housing, it's also an issue about education and what's happening with the children. It's also an issue about social services and what may be happening there. And it's also an issue about how that person's mental health may be affected, the mental health of the children. So it's a very, very complex issue. The one story has all these complexities. And when you only have one service, or one set of lenses, it's very inadequate. I think in terms of the project, our, our main um, aim at the moment is to start the volunteer programme, so fully design a volunteer programme so we know that the volunteers we train will be well equipped to provide advice first aid in their communities. But then I think more widely in terms of the network, I think it's really about um, having these different organisations and people starting to feel part of a network and think about that network and think about how they can work with the people that they've met here um, in different ways to support people facing hardship. Having people from different parts of the society bringing their minds together, bringing their sets of knowledge, knowledge together, then we stand a chance of being able to understand how to make an impact and to do that early.